we touched uh, last uh, week in last uh, our last episode, Keith, on the uh, Marco Simoncelli documentary that uh, you uh, very much recommended to us to give it a watch. Um, we didn't delve into too much detail about it, though, because we were mainly focusing on, on Valentino Rossi. So uh, Marco Simoncelli, obviously a renowned name and a, and a tragic story as well in MotoGP. But, but what a story for him as a rider. Uh, talk us through the, the documentary. What was it called? Sick. As I see, which, um, as I think we established, meant something mm. quite rude. <laughs> mm. The abbreviation uh, <laughs> means something quite rude in Italian, which uh, I quite, I, and again, it's in the documentary, so I, I, I won't have to repeat it here because you'll all run and, and want to watch it. It was on Sky Documentaries. It's made by Sky Italia, um, which, of course, is like the, the, the equivalent to Sky UK and so on. They have a, various regions that Sky operate out of. Um, I mean, the film itself, there were quite a lot of revelations in there that were quite interesting from Simoncelli. I didn't know Simoncelli particularly. You know, he 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 just he came on in my lull, if you like, in MotoGP when I wasn't actually around the paddock. So I didn't know Marco at all to speak to or otherwise. But I followed him from a youngster when he came up through the 250s um, because 250s is one of my favourite classes and what was the intermediate class, now Moto2, of course. Um and it kind of showed how determined I think the young man was and how much backing he had from his family. I mean, he had a lot of forceful backing coming to, to move him on through, through the ranks, if you like, and the, the wrangles he had with Aprilia at the time. And, and all of that was narrated by the likes of Valentino Rossi and other pretty big names in our sport. So it was a well put together thing. Um, but at the end of the day, he crashed a lot. And the ultimate price was paid um, at Sepang, which, as I said last week, was ironic that Sepang was the, the, the scene of where he won his first world title in 2008 on a 250. And he was killed there, I think, um, was it turn 11 in 2011? Um, having lost the bike, you know, all his own accident, but then it turned to the inside and, and got collected by Colin Edwards and, and Valentino Rossi. Um, nothing they could do at all at the time. And I mean, you can imagine, you know, being part of, of, of something like that, particularly if the, the, the friendship that the Valentino had with, with Marco, it, it, it was tragic on, on another level. The documentary, I recommend the documentary to watch, obviously, um, and get from it what you will. I, I'd be interested to note what crash viewers, crash listeners um, have to say about that. Um, give us some comments on it because I'm quite reserved on what I'm, what I'm saying here, which is unusual for me. Normally, I'd go blasting away, shooting from the hip. But I, I came out of it with a slightly different pre- impression about Marco Simoncelli than I think is the popular impression about Marco Simoncelli. Um, there was a certain ruthlessness there that I didn't really like that much, to be honest. Um, but, of course, I'm reluctant to say something like that over a man that's revered as much as he is. But, of course, in death, people always see something differently about a writer, an author, a person whatever it is. It's, it's funny how the, the viewpoint sort of changes after someone uh, is deceased. Um, but I'd be interested to, to, to know what uh, other viewers and listeners um, find when they've watched the documentary. Let us know what your thoughts are. We're always pleased to hear from you. Absolutely. And uh, we're not sponsored by Sky Documentaries, but you can find it on Sky Documentaries in, in the UK. And uh, if not, just uh, search for uh, the uh, title SIC and I'm sure it will be discoverable and there's a couple others you actually recommended to us as well just uh, off air last week I was because I am uh, ill educated when it comes to MotoGP documentaries but a couple of others there that you uh, you certainly mentioned Racing to Immortality uh, Missile from the East a couple of good ones there Keith well race, race to Immortality is a Ferrari thing that's right up your street I'm actually surprised Harry that you've not sat and watched that that is that is your movie I mean, it is a, it's a really, really good movie. It goes back to the sort of 50s and 60s. Um, Mon Ami Mate and all the rest of it. You go back to the old um, uh, Mike Hawthorne days and, and so on and so forth. Mm. Very, very interesting doco for anybody that particularly in cars and Ferrari. But as a, the racing genre, it doesn't matter sometimes whether it's bikes or cars. The, the, the same amount, the level of dedication, risk, and everything else that goes with it. So I, I would suggest that even if you're a bike man and you go, oh, I'm not going to watch a bloody car movie, I still suggest you watch it. I do, and I really enjoy it. I mean, 
Race to Immortality is 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 basically a doco about Enzo Ferrari, how he played off you know teams and team members against each other, and how many people were you know killed back in that day. It was all horrendous, but but an interesting film. Missile from the East, you mentioned that. That's the Ernst Degner thing. Now, those of you that have got uh, Matt Oxley's book, um, Stealing Speed, if you remember, Suzuki signed up Ernst Degner. Degner uh, did a runner from East Germany at a time when it was very dangerous to do a runner from East Germany um, with his family. Uh, led a very sad life in the end as well. But um, if you've read the book, Stealing, Stealing Speed, then Missile from the East is, again, very again a historic, you know, very interesting from from a world war perspective as well. So I mean, it's a perspective that maybe falls more and more in into perspective now that we've got this thing going on in Ukraine, of course. Um, so a missile from the east, recommended by good old Hugh. And if you want to go back a few more, go back to Burt Munro, if you like, as as well. You've got the, the, the you know what was it called? Bloody world's fastest Indian. That was it. World's fastest Indian, which was Anthony Hopkins. Bert Munro was a 68-year-old who had a dream to, to race this Indian motorcycle on the Bonneville Salt Flats or wherever it was. Again, a great movie. Who would have thought Anthony Hopkins would have starred in a bloody motorcycle movie? Good movie. Um, Neil Tuxworth at uh, Honda Britain, you know, the, the team manager at Honda Britain all those years ago, recommended it to me a long, long, long time ago. And I remember thinking, what Tuck's on about? And then I watched it, and it's one of those movies that you think, oh, how did I miss this? And maybe there are people out there that have missed it. So um, keep an eye out for the world's fastest Indian. Um, what's the other one that I really, really liked? Oh, this is uh, uh, as much a political and world piece as anything. But if if, if I was going to be reincarnated, if, if we're a Buddhist family here, because my wife is is devout Buddhist, so I don't care about any religion. So you, you, you can put me down as agnostic if you like. But if I was to be reincarnated, if I was to believe in the same thing with my wife, then I would come back as Gianni Agnelli. Look up Gianni Agnelli. He was the head of Fiat back in the day, and there was a great film called Agnelli about his life. Playboy, bit of a philanderer, brilliant industrialist, world player, politi politi politician. Can't even say it, so I'd be no good at it. Um, <laughs> but again... You know, out of Turin, Fiat were out of Turin, you know, you got the racetrack around the top of the offices and all, just a brilliant movie about this this man and, and the life and what he did to bring Italy out of the the, the doldrums after all, after the war. Um, so, again, a, a very, very interesting movie. Do you want me to go on? <laughs> no, no, we're done. We're out of time. No, how, many, how many more you got? Oh, there's so many. There's so many movies that, that, that basically... Uh, different people will get different things from them. Um, I think mm. with world events at the moment and the way things are, I think the Agnelli movie is a, is a good one. Obviously, you know, you, you go back to a darker era. Why are we leading this moronic life? How can we be in the position we are in in the world? Why is it like it? And when you see that we've been there and done it all before, and here we are again, and our so-called bloody politicians who are supposed to be the ones that keep the world safe, are, you know, we're looming on, we're on the edge of the Cuban Missile Crisis multiplied by four. It's just nuts. If you don't know what the Cuban Missile Crisis is, you know, you, you won't do because most people are younger than me by a long way nowadays. But, you know, we're talking about nuclear possibilities. I mean, how on earth can we be at that point? Shut up, Hewan. This is a bloody motorcycle <laughs> podcast and you shouldn't be going on about stuff like this. <laughs> But you could also, maybe I should, are you joining? The world should be concerned. No, I, I think you make some valid points, and and hopefully you'll be joining Sebastian Vettel on Question Time this Thursday uh, to make those points even even more. Uh, peace and love um, all the way through. Um, we'll leave the docs there because maybe we can come back to some more in future episodes and have a little what to watch on the box. Well, maybe uh, maybe our, our our fans and viewers out there will have their own suggestions, and we can um, we can comment on what they've um, what they've watched. I mean. There's Road, the Dunlop brothers. I'm going to the Northwest 200 on Wednesday this week. It's the Northwest 200 this week as well. So we've got plenty of things to be watching over the weekend. Um, and it brings it all back. I was I was commentating on the race that Robert was killed at, at Mathers Cross. You know, they're, again, and if you've not seen the film Road, it's about the Dunlop brothers, and that is one tear-jerking. You'll be getting a bit of grit in your eye when you watch that one, I can tell you. 
So there's one maybe this week with the Northwest 200 coming up and, of course, the TT coming up fairly soon as well in June. Um, it might be time to be getting out the old movie list. I've written them all down there. I think I'm going to have a great week. Well, lots to uh, look out for then indeed. It's going to be a, a busy weekend of two-wheeled action, it seems. Thank you, gents. We'll leave it there for now. Make sure uh, you stay tuned in across Crash.net for all the very latest, as usual, news analysis and everything in between across the week. And we'll be back with you once more next week to look back at Le Mans and look forward into the continuing races. Get your questions in, leave them in the comments section or tweet Instagram or Facebook us. Just search Crash Moto GP. We have got a, a huge bank of questions, which we will get answered uh, it's just finding the right time to do them so don't worry keep sending them in uh, because it's always good to have lots of questions lined up for our expert guests uh, guests call you guests you're regulars really aren't you um so get them in please do leave us a review wherever you are in the world and wherever you listen to your podcast and we shall see you right back here next week bye-bye <laughs>